some of this, but there's not that much. The relationship that many black and brown folks have with the land is, is traumatic. And a lot of black and brown people don't know why. It's generational trauma. It's just generations and generations of, of this unhealthy, toxic relationship with land. So one of the primary things that we do here during the immersion programs is really focus on re-engaging in the African ancestral ways of farming. It was hard to get access to land. I couldn't get banks to give me loans. I couldn't get, I other, often when I was in Pennsylvania, other farmers didn't believe that I was a farmer and was legitimate. Or they would tell me that black people don't farm when I was like a young person just beginning to farm. And I, like, it was very insulting because who are you to tell me that, I, that we don't do anything? Why can't we farm? Like, it, um, but when I came to New York, things were much better. And it's, it is difficult. It's difficult to find access to land. It's difficult to get people to take you seriously when you're, like a brown farmer, but you can't you can't let that you go on about what you know is right and what you know you need to do and need just to, keep pushing forward. Uh, they live in the little houses. They get moved uh, once a week or every five days, depending on how quickly they eat through what's in the pen. So you can see what pen they were in before, right over there, where it's very low. And those are yours. These are all my pigs. Let me turn that fence off. Just Being able to <laughs> offer that to people who are in low-income communities who don't have access to good food, who are you know some don't even have money to take the bus and get their kids to school, you know, people who are just really disadvantaged, um, that just something like a beautiful box of produce can spark something in them, you know, and spark something and remind them of who they are as, as a black person in America. And it's not what the culture has told us that we are.